In the story of Susan Powell, there is one man whose possible role has remained a mystery. Tonight, for the first time ever, we're hearing from Josh Powell's brother, Michael. Yeah, he is the man police were turning their focus on towards the end of the investigation, but whose involvement detectives were never able to fully understand. Here's cold host Dave Colley. I don't believe that he was involved. In the more than nine years since Susan Powell went missing, this is the most we have ever heard from Michael Powell. Do you believe Josh was capable of participating in or causing the disappearance or death of his wife? No. Did you ever ask him if she came to harm in some way? No. Never asked him if he got mad and did something to her? No. Josh's youngest brother arrived in Utah just days after Susan disappeared, assisting Josh with caring for Charlie and Braden. But it would be more than a year before police started questioning what else he assisted Josh with. Did you have any role in Susan's disappearance? Before we get to his answer, you need to know where this interview came from. This is not a police interrogation. It's a civil deposition as part of a legal battle over Josh and Susan Powell's life insurance money. Josh Powell had taken out $3.5 million in life insurance on Susan and on the boys. Ann Bremner is the Cox family attorney. Once she went missing, he changed the beneficiary um, in it to his brother Michael. One of the many unanswered questions in this case is why. Michael was so smart that he was very hard to depose because he was ahead of me the whole time. And he was very good at not giving me responses. And I can remember just being so frustrated with him and he was cold as a cucumber. Michael Powell had worked in military intelligence and he knew how interrogations worked. He even helped coach Josh through his initial interviews with investigators. You guys are already trying to trap me on little things. What kind of communication did you have with Josh? The two weeks before Susan disappeared, back in December of 09. Phone conversation. We don't have records to document those calls, but we do have records that show Michael Powell didn't talk to anyone on his cell phone from December 4th, three days before Susan disappeared, until December 12th, eight days later. He went off the grid, only checking his voicemail two times on the same day and at the same time Josh returned from the desert with the boys. A drastic deviation from what his phone records showed was his norm. So what happened during the time he went dark? Susan went missing and Josh Powell disappeared in a rental car for two days, putting 800 miles on the odometer. He was driving to meet Michael. And we found that out later, that he met up with Michael somewhere between here and Washington. It was Michael's car, however, that left police with the most unanswered questions. I owned a uh, 1997 Ford Taurus. That's the car Michael and his sister Alina drove from Washington to Utah, but it didn't get them home. On December 23rd, 2009, two days before Christmas and about two weeks after Susan disappeared, Josh Powell's brother, Michael, sold his car to this salvage lot in Pendleton, Oregon for about a hundred bucks. The car had actually broken down in Baker City. Michael and Alina called AAA for help. And despite there being four wrecking yards and repair shops within three miles, the pair insisted the car be towed nearly 100 miles away to Pendleton. Police wouldn't find out about the Taurus for another 21 months. Detectives wanted that car. They actually came up here with a flatbed trailer and pulled it out of the yard. It was missing a few pieces, but largely still intact. In September 2011, cadaver dogs searched Michael's salvaged car, indicating the presence of human decomposition in at least two places, the back seat and the trunk. But samples sent to the Utah State Crime Lab, including a hair found on the carpet, did not match Susan's DNA. Frustrating for police who told Cold they thought they had finally caught a big break. The lab called me and I went down and, and sat with them and I, I had butterflies. Um, I was excited, I was nervous, but then again I was skeptical because, you know, it was just going to be another swift kick in the guts and uh, at the end of the day it was. Investigators still had questions. Hello, my name is Michael there. Detectives flew to Minnesota, where Michael was living, for a surprise interview. True to form, he gave them nothing to go on. They asked me, you know, did you kill Susan? I said no. Um, they asked me, do I know anything about it? I said no. Did they ask you to take a polygraph? No, they did not. Did you offer to take one? No, I did not. Two months later, he went to the website for a satellite imaging company in Colorado called Apollo Mapping. 
Hello. Hi, is this Michael? Yeah. Hey, Michael, this is Katie calling from Apollo Mappy. You had contacted me a couple of months ago about some satellite imagery. Yeah. Yeah, we just um, we got something just uh, about a month or two ago from June of the area you were interested in. Pendleton, Oregon. Yeah, in, of Pendleton. Um, do you have a like, lat long coordinate? Just um, I couldn't give you lat long, but I could give you uh, about the name of the establishment. I don't know if you go that way. Yeah, yeah I can do that too. Uh, it should be like Lindell's. Lindell's junk. Michael called back the next day and told her he would like to buy the new satellite image. I generally try to dissuade people from getting imagery who were looking for something like cars. And he was rather insistent that it was fine, that he just wanted anything that we had. It is interesting that he went 100 miles north to dispose of it and then him being concerned why it wasn't smashed and looking for satellite imagery. Ann Bremner didn't know about the potential importance of the Taurus when she questioned him. That piece was about to come down on his head, I think he thought. But she did know police had their microscope on Michael. Did you ever learn that the West Valley City Police were looking at you as a potential accessory after the fact in no, Susan's disappearance? No. And just like investigators, Bremner hoped she could crack his composure. Have you ever talked to Josh about his potential involvement in Susan's disappearance? No, I haven't. You are awfully close, it sounds like, two-hour phone calls right. on a regular basis, and you never talked about it. He said he wasn't involved, but... That was it? Right. Do you think Susan's dead or alive? I don't know. You don't have an opinion? <sighs> no. Did you have any role in Susan's disappearance? No, I did not. Police were never able to fully pursue their theories about Michael's involvement. He took his own life in February of 2013. You can catch up with this week's episode of Cold, available right now wherever you get podcasts at thecoldpodcast.com and on the KSL TV app.